Six Nations over the weekend. All the away teams won. Kicked off with Ireland on Saturday morning and then followed with England and Italy and then the Jocks getting a big lead, just about chased down by Wales. But Wales, that's the story of their rugby over the last couple of years, isn't it? Just about. Justin Marshall up north for us covering it. Justin, so what do we learn from the Six Nations opening round? France versus Ireland. It was marred by another red card, Willems. Uh, just dumbass, dumbass, dumbass. Yep, yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, again, the players know the guidelines. They know the law at the moment. And regardless of any mitigating circumstances, look at like it. You know, we know what they are, which is, you know, the player was falling into my shoulder or you know whatever it might be that you feel you're going to get an excuse for at the end of the day when a TMO is sitting up in, in that box um, has the review system and sees direct contact to the head regardless of all of it once it's direct contact to the head you're going to see yellow and then if you do it twice you're going to see red um, unfortunately Marty uh, in international rugby um, unlike uh, super rugby you don't have then that cool down period for 20 minutes where you've got to try and survive with 14 men and then you can get back to 15 and we've got a contest again if you're good enough to stay in the game. Um, in international rugby, if it happens in the first minute or the 79th, uh, you, you're living with 14 men. Um, and unfortunately for France, they had to deal with that. Uh, and look, at, at the end of the day, to be perfectly honest, I feel it ruins the contest. Mm, I feel we need, to really, yeah. we need to really look at it. Look, I know it's a deterrent. And when it's red, a deterrent means if you get it wrong and you're down to 14 men in international rugby because the tempo and the intensity is so high, um, that's the maximum penalty. So if you don't learn, this is what happens. But as a spectacle, when you're going along and you're a ticket holder and you pay big money and you do pay big money for the Six Nations and you see a game reduced to uh, a one-man advantage, um, it, it does sting a bit because you feel that there's a little bit out of the contest that's missing. But in saying that, I must say, mate, Ireland, holy moly, holy moly, they were impressive. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. Look, they're, they're an excellent team. We knew that, and also, yeah. you know, in the quarterfinal against the All Blacks, that you know, that was probably the worst game that they'd played out of the eighteen and nineteen tests, and just happened to be the one that they lost. But just quickly back on Williamson, look, you know, it's inexcusable, I know, but I, I just, I just can't help but feel that, I, you know, I agree with you that as a spectator, I'm short changed. My, I groaned as soon as he went off and just said, oh, okay, it's 14 versus 15. Yeah. If you're an Irish fan, you're going to enjoy winning by 20 points. But, you know, I'm not. And so, therefore, I just want to see an even contest between two teams who I thought are the two best teams in the Six Nations, the two that were probably left the World Cup most disappointed. There was so much riding on this. And in the end, there's always an asterisk beside the scoreline like the World Cup final to me. Justin, these are the two biggest games in the sport. This is World Rugby, your showpiece. This is your shop window. The World Cup final, you know, probably the final of the Six Nations in the opening round, and both of those games get wrecked by a red card. I'm not blaming the officials or the, or the rules or anything like that. I just feel like, I don't know. Maybe the answer is, as you say, the Super Rugby thing, Willemsa can't come back on, but your other lock comes back on, so you lose one off the bench. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. Yeah, and, and you need to survive 20 minutes, you know, uh, and, and 20 minutes is a, is a long period of time. You know, if teams knew, knew that law, Marty, and, and, they, and they'll and discuss it because they analyse the game to the nth degree, and they knew that if a player gets a red card and they say to, each, and they say to themselves, right, oh, in their tactics throughout the week, they go, right, oh, if they get a red card, we know we've got 20 minutes. This is what we're going to do. Because you know that the opposition are going to basically tread water for yeah, 20 minutes. yeah, yeah. And, and try and survive and not leak points until that player comes on. So there's a real tactical thing goes on for 20 minutes. The, the dynamic that uh, it also plays a part in it, which does irritate me a bit, is it completely changes the way you've got to play. Because when you are down a man, you are literally having to adapt and adjust. You think, OK, we wanted to attack them from inside their own half, even inside our own from inside our own 22, and we wanted to have a real lick at them. But... Now that we're down to 14, it's just going to fatigue us, and they're going. To, we're going to tire quicker. So all of a sudden, France become insular. Yeah, yeah. And again, we're not only robbed of the spectacle, but we're robbed of the way both teams can play. And that's the discussion we've got ahead. Look, I, I, I get it. I get the fact that they're trying to teach the players to take this out of the game, so we don't have the head injury problems and, and the ongoing issues from those. Um, but 
at, at the end of the day, we've also got to think about our game and the spectacle of the game and a contest. And this, this, I don't feel that this game was so much robbed as others I've seen because I just thought initially, right from kickoff, that Ireland were just a team that were better in sync right from the start. Let's not think about Williamson and what he did. You know, obviously, brain explosion a couple of times. But, boy, they look slick. No Johnny Sexton. And I thought the way they orchestrated that win there, they're dynamic. When they get into the right zones, they're quick. They've got tempo. They've got pace. They've got power. They've got some real grunt up front. And, um, yeah, they, they, they looked very, very good. And, and good to see them bounce back from a massive disappointment at the Rugby World Cup. They are a force to be reckoned with. So... Yeah, we've, we've had the debate, Marty. Me and you yep, yep. sit in the same chair, yeah. mate. Okay. Um, but again, I don't think it would have saved Ireland on the day, even if they still had 15. Yeah, uh, France on the day. France, I should say. So, yeah. 81 that, test veteran, the, the All Blacks, um, Justin Marshall. We've still got two other games. England scraping past Italy, 27 24. But they do this in the Six Nations. Before we get on to the one you're at, the Wales Scotland game, they do this, don't they, England? Yeah, they win so many games where they don't look impressive, but they win those games. So I'm not panicking on their behalf. No, uh, but man, they were lucky, honestly. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you can't afford to be slightly off, and uh, they were. And, and obviously, you know, missing Farrell and, and then Marcus Smith pulling out as well. They they were thrown into a situation where, you know, George Ford, who hasn't been playing much, had to, to uh, grab the helm and, and be the general on the day. Um, I, I think like both games, I know we're, I know we're going to speak about the Wales-Scotland uh, game, but I certainly feel equally for for the England game. And isn't it interesting that both both times when these sides were desperate, Wales were desperate and England were desperate, their bench made a massive difference. The bench changed the game. You know, Wales' bench just took things direct and straight, stopped uh, flipping around trying to get the ball to their threats on the outside um, because they were getting shut down by Scotland's defence and they went direct. And equally, you know, they brought some firepower off the bench, England, and they changed the way the game was flowing and... It goes to show you, you know, tactically as a coach, you have to be onto it when you see that you're bleeding, and if you don't stop the bleeding and change the way that the game's going, then, then you then you're not going to get the job done at the end of the day. So, look, Borthwick will be disappointed the way they stuttered their way through the game, and then had to rely on their bench, not the starting fifteen that he thought was going to be getting getting the job done, and then the reserves come on and finish it off. It had to happen the other way around. So. You know, they got a big game this weekend, again, under a lot of pressure. Um, retirements and players unavailable has thrown them into turmoil a little bit. Um, new captain and everything, so a lot to think about. But, uh, look, ultimately, Test Match Rugby, you get the job done. They got it done away, but they had to do it the hard way, and it wouldn't have made them feel good going into training on Monday. But still, they were winners, and that's what counts. Three matches over the weekend, the openers of the Six Nations, all three away teams winning. Ireland getting up uh, in Marseille, uh, the Palms doing it over Italy, and Scotland with a massive lead, a 27-point lead against Wales, and then Wales come back, lose it by 26-27. Was it Scotland throwing it away, or is it more about the Welsh comeback? You were there. How do you read that game? Well, it was there, Marty, and, and first of all, I have to say, what an incredible um, atmosphere it really was, and... It was really good to see a lot of kilts around before the game. And, and equally, the Welsh with their with their daffodils and their jerseys and all the other paraphernalia that they bring to the mix. And then the singing as well. Um, with the roof closed and, and interestingly, earlier in the week, I think it was two days before, Scotland said they wanted it closed. Um, they wanted it open, I should say. And then all of a sudden they changed their mind and wanted it closed. And it was actually raining on the day. So we got a spectacle and, and that was brilliant. Uh, in answer to your question, um, I thought Scotland in the first half, and I think Finn Russell said it in his interview after the game, they were really good. They, they hit their, their marks that they wanted to hit. When they had the opportunities, they took them really, really well. He obviously kicked the goals as well. I thought particularly the second try that they constructed was simply outstanding. It was a really good team try. There was always going to be a response from Wales, but that didn't start just after half time. Again, it was when they brought their bench on. And the bench players just ended up going direct and just went hard at the opposition. And all of a sudden, they found themselves on the back foot Scotland and couldn't find their way out of a hole. Finn Russell was his first game as captain 
He's also the general when he needs to put them in the right areas. He would have learnt a lot from, I guess, going through a situation where they were so dominant and then having to stay in the game and fight for the win. Um, I'm not quite sure if I can put my finger on which way around it really was. The Welsh were always going to get back up for it and the crowd got behind them. Um, but I think if I had to put my finger on you made me, which you have with <laughs> your question, yep. and good on you, mate, I would say I think more so Scotland just buttoned off a bit. Um, but when they needed to, they found the right areas, particularly at the end of the game, and probably should have scored another try. So, yeah, I think that's pr- pretty much how he um, summarised the game as well in his end-of-game interview, Finn Russell. Again, it's scrappy ball on the platform. Devlin. You've got to love sport. The platform.